Hey guys, I'm Sun, I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. Today is episode seven of the Bitcoin series. If you haven't watched the other episodes, I highly recommend watching them in order uh, as we're going deeper and deeper into the Bitcoin rabbit hole. Uh, in today's episode, I am going to show you guys how I go about provisioning my Trezor devices uh, using command line rather than using the browser. Uh, I really find the browser uh, landscape inherently vulnerable. I like uh, limiting the attack surface as much as I can. Therefore, when setting up Trezor devices, I really like using command line. Browsers, as I've talked about in other episodes of the Privacy Guide series, are kind of unsafe. Uh, a lot of us have browser extensions that have overreaching permissions. Uh, for instance, an ad blocker that may be able to exfiltrate whatever happens on pretty much all websites we visit, including the Trezor website. So to that extent, I like doing things uh, in a more hardened way and using command line is great. Now to make things even better, Trezor has collaborated with Tails. Tails is an amnesic operating system designed for privacy conscious use cases. Tails is a hardened operating system that you boot to. So it's a great way of compartmentalizing uh, sensitive use cases away from your daily driver, such as Mac. Uh, yeah, so they collaborated and using Trezor devices on Tails is pretty much plug and play. And that is true for using Trezor CTL, which is the command line utility I'll be showing you guys today, and for using Electrum with uh, Trezor hardware wallets. Um, before I go about showing you guys how to set things up, uh, I still wanna mention that anything you read down there in the comments, that might be someone trying to steal your crypto or steal your money, please be mindful of this. I'm also counting on each and every one of you to report any spammy comments so that we get to keep the conversation going. Now, I also don't want to forget to mention uh, ShakePay. ShakePay is a Canadian Bitcoin exchange that is used by Canadians to buy and sell Bitcoin. ShakePay has supported the Privacy Guides project and has sponsored the whole Bitcoin series. Without them, this content, today's episode, would not have been possible. So thanks to ShakePay, I'll link to them in the description. All right, so today's episode has reference material. I'll link to it in the description as well. Um, everything that is explained here in the setup guide, that is macOS only. As I mentioned, all of this stuff has been pre-installed on Tails, which makes it super easy for us to use in the context of Tails. For, uh, in the context of macOS, it's quite simple to set up. Uh, first things first, we wanna make sure that we have homebrew. So if you type brew dash dash version, and something is returned, it means that you have Homebrew installed on your Mac. Homebrew is an open source package manager for Mac OS. Uh, I've talked about it in many episodes. So if you've been following the Privacy Guide series for some time, you have likely installed it already. Um, then I always recommend uh, disabling Brew Analytics. And uh, we want to make sure that libUSB is installed on our computer. libUSB is one of the dependencies of Trezor CTL. So, um, I am allowing this true little snitch. This is my application layer firewall. If you want to learn more about that, there's an episode for it. Uh, you can use search on YouTube or PeerTube to discover these episodes. Um, so yeah, in theory, I think I have libUSB installed on this computer. Uh, so we will see. Yes, perfect. Uh, if you are a Mojave user, uh, you need to install Python version 3. Uh, Python 3 is not uh, pre-installed on Mojave, but it is on Catalina. Uh, now, if you guys are following these steps and you're on Big Sur, chances are it will work. Let us know in the comments, please. Uh, I haven't tried it as I don't have a workstation on Big Sur yet. Um, all right, now that Python 3 is installed, uh, we can use pip. Pip is a package manager uh, for Python. Pip is uh, to Python what Homebrew is to Mac. So we are installing ATTRS and Trezor. ATTRS is a dependency required by Trezor and Trezor is essentially the package that installs the Trezor CTL command line utility. So what we are seeing here, it says uh, the script Trezor is installed in blah, 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 which is not in path. That means that if I type which Trezor CTL enter, it will say Trezor CTL not found. Uh, so we need to add uh, the folder here bloop, to our path. This is done uh, as such. First things first, uh, you have to see which shell you're using. If you are on Mojave, chances are you are using Bash. Uh, Catalina ships with Z shell by default. So uh, as I can see here, I'm on Catalina and this is Z shell. So I wanna see which uh, is the December of latest version of Python 3. Uh, it is said here, whoops, I was a hard, hard time with this. It's version 3.9. So 
Uh, please be mindful when you run these commands, uh, you need to make sure that you update that 3.8 for 3.9 in the context of my computer. The reason why my computer differs from what's in the reference material is on this machine, I have installed a newer version of Python using uh, Homebrew, likely in the context of Borg backup. Um, all right, enter. And then if we source that .zshrc file and I run this which command again, boom, Trezor CTL is found. So at this point, uh, if you're on Tails, this is where it starts for you as well because the setup uh, guide is now completed and we're switching to usage guide. Um, all right, Trezor devices, both model one and model T, they ship without a firmware pre-installed on them. And that's done for security reasons and to make sure that we, the users, install latest version of firmware when we receive the device. Uh, what that means is if you plug it into Electrum, at least that's my understanding, you won't be able to create a wallet. The Electrum app is capable uh, through a wizard of setting up the seed on a Trezor device, but I don't think it's capable of installing firmware. That is where by default we are asked to go on the Trezor website, which will then bring us to the wallet and the wallet itself will install the firmware. Today, we are doing this using command line to compartmentalize things a little more and for this to work in the context of Tails. Tails is amazing, but the Tor browser on Tails cannot access the Trezor device. I have reference material on how to fix this, not fix this, but patch this. I'll link to it in the description. Perhaps I'll create an episode on this uh, to show you guys how it's done, but by default, it's not possible to use Trezor devices with the web wallet, which means it's not possible to provision them with a new firmware. That is where command line is fantastic. All right, so I have the overhead camera here, so we're gonna start with the Trezor One. If I plug it in, hopefully you'll see something on the overhead cam. It says, welcome, please visit trezor.io slash start. Um, now, by, by default, as I said, there's no firmware on it, so we can go about uh, running firmware update, and we don't need to um, connect device in bootloader mode as it is connected in bootloader mode by default when no firmware is found on the device. So now if I press enter, um, now it will download latest firmware from the Trezor website and it will start provisioning it on the Trezor hardware device. Now this is a little dark, sorry about this, I'm really optimizing so you guys see what's happening here on the screen. So it is installing the firmware onto the device uh, and that should be quite fast. Once this is done, we can then use either uh, Electrum or command line to uh, have it generate its own seed material and initiate the backup process. Uh, so, all right, this is good. Next up, we wanna set up the device. So again, this you can do in Electrum at this point in time, but we are going to do it using command line. You wanna run Trezor CTL device setup, strength 256, that will generate a 24 word mnemonic uh, while we're at it, using uh, the model, uh, not the model one, damn it, the Trezor one, Trezor one will generate a 24 word mnemonic when using the wallet, but for the Trezor model T, it will generate a 12 word mnemonic. I kind of favor using 24 words. It is more quantum resistant. It's just a much higher bit uh, cryptographic setup. So strength 256, that's 24 word. If you wanna set it up with a 12 word, you would replace strength 256 by strength 128. Uh, passphrase protection, super important. That is how you get to set up multiple wallets using the same seed material or the same mnemonic. Uh, it's great for plausible deniability and it's great to mitigate, uh, you know, passphrase, uh, uh, not passphrase, but like different types of physical vulnerabilities and stuff like this. Pin protection, uh, that will enable pin protection. Pro, pro, pin protection. Pin protection. I'm not able to say it, sorry about that. Label, my Trezor one, backup type, single. Uh, Trezor one uh, will essentially show you a 24 word mnemonic on screen. I'll show you guys what this looks like in a second. And you need to write it down on a piece of paper. Uh, to this extent, uh, I recommend using a good quality waterproof pen. I'm a huge fan of Sakura. It's a Japanese pen maker and they really specialize in amazing pigments. That pen is the most waterproof pen I found so far. That said, I really like encrypting paper backups uh, to something like encrypted QR codes. And in order to pull this off, um, I created a special little Raspberry Pi project that I will be showing probably not in the next episode, but the one after that, 
This is used to create encrypted QR codes. You get to encrypt any form of secrets, uh, but it has uh, cool features to make sure that what you're entering is a BIP39 uh, compliant uh, mnemonic and stuff like this. More of this in a future episode. Um, all right, enter. So what is happening here? It is saying, do you really want to create a new wallet? Yes, confirm. Now we get to set the pin. Uh, so this is a little quirky when using command line because the Trezor device will uh, shuffle the pin on the screen so that when you type it on your computer, if your computer has a key logger, uh, it will not uh, exfiltrate the actual pin. It will exfiltrate a shuffled version of it. So what you see on screen here, that is the reference. And on the Trezor device, that is what you should really be looking at and then use a reference for like sh shuffling things. It's really confusing. Sorry about this. Um, by the way, the Trezor Model T is amazing in this regard because you type in the pin on the actual device using the touchscreen. So that's one of the reasons why I really like the Model T. Okay, so I have a pin here, um, which I kind of randomly generated. I recommend having a six digit pin, uh, six, sorry, eight digit pin. I think you can go all the way up to 10, uh, but yeah, eight should be good enough. Uh, so looking at the screen here, my first digit is one. So one on screen matches one here. So I type one on the keyboard. Then I have a six, six is a nine. Then I have a five, five is a three. Then I have a three, three is a five. No way, I got it for a shot. <laughs> I was hoping I wouldn't have to reshoot this whole take. Ah, okay. So once this is done, it's super confusing, but you'll get the gist of it. Um, well, now you have the 24 word mnemonic that's shown on screen. This is something that you would wanna write on your piece of paper. I won't write it down because I'm gonna be showing you guys how to provision the Trezor Model T. For you guys who have never seen a T in action, that will give you some context. But yeah, so you would write this down on your piece of paper very carefully. And there are 24 words. And then once you get to the end, it will go through the words again. So you, we get to confirm uh, that what we wrote on a piece of paper is actually uh, the right thing. Uh, all right, and once this is done, boom, my Trezor One, this device is now ready to use uh, with any you know software wallet, uh, such as Electrum, whatever. Uh, let's do the same on the Model T. So Model T, you plug it in, and now we are going to uh, update the firmware. So firmware update, enter, and now same process as before. It is downloading latest firmware from Trezor and it will install it onto our Trezor Model T. As you can see here, this is a full color display. It is also a touch screen, which makes user experience much better. Uh, if you haven't watched the episode on uh, Trezor One versus Trezor Model T versus Cold Card, uh, which are kind of my favorite uh, hardware wallets and the ones that I use, uh, I'll link to it in the description. It will give you some context as to why I choose one versus the other uh, as the Model T is pretty much like it's significantly more expensive than uh, the model one. Okay, so this should be installed shortly. All right, so installation of firmware is done. It is restarting in one second. Now I see my screen is quite dirty. Hopefully you won't see this on camera. Okay, so once this is done, uh, we can run the same command as before. Uh, instead of labeling it Trezor, uh, my Trezor one, I will call it my Trezor model T, enter. Now, uh, I'm using backup type single um, because I like using my little Raspberry Pi device to create encrypted uh, paper backups. That said, uh, another cool feature of Model T is you can use a Shamir backup scheme where it will create uh, essentially a X of Y um, paper backup, meaning you'll have several paper backups and you need you know X of Y of them to regenerate uh, the secret, to restore the secret. So that's a really cool feature baked into the Model T. Okay, so uh, do you want to create a new wallet? Yes, and now it is doing it, uh, processing, and now we need to set the pin. So uh, one, six, five, three, two, seven, one, two, and it now shuffled it uh, to make sure that we're not going to create a typo. One, six. Uh, five, three, two, seven, one, two, whoops, damn it, one, six. It's it's a small screen, by the way. Some people like using a stylus, even with my fingers, they're not that big, it's kind of hard. 
one six five three two seven one two enter ah <laughs> oh, sun 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 one six five three two seven one two one six five three two seven one two okay good so now pin is configured and uh, we need to back up the wallet so never make a digital copy of your recovery seed and never upload it online a paper backup is called a paper backup because it is old school it is on paper it is a non-tech way of storing secrets it is a way that is not connected to the internet and that cannot be uh, exploited using software someone has to exploit it using a physical attack which is in the realm of opsec uh, if you want to learn more about bitcoin security and privacy there is an episode dedicated to this i'll link to it in the description so i understand now i will do this uh off camera i need to write this down on a piece of paper because the trezor model t will actually confirm that we wrote it down by asking us for a few of those words uh so i'll see you guys in a second here all right so i'm done writing all of those words on a piece of paper as you likely can tell i am not used to writing with an actual pen i type pretty much all the time now so uh, next step is you want to hold to confirm and then it will ask you for word number four of 24. So one, two, three, four, scatter. 11, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, acoustic. Uh, 19, so acoustic is 11. 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Ha oh, wait, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15. Somehow I'm having a hard time counting this morning. Damn it, so backup is done, continue. Okay. So as you can see here, we have our uh, My Trezor Model T set up now. So again, this device is also ready to be used on uh, Electrum or any other uh, software wallet. Next up, uh, if you want to change your pin, this is what you would run. run whoa, this is what you would want to run. If you want to set the label, this is what you would want to run. And if, for instance, uh, you want to make sure that you wipe everything from a device to factory reset it, maybe you're giving it to a loved one or a friend, someone who trusts you, because you should never ever use a Trezor wallet uh, that wasn't sourced properly. There's an episode on sourcing hardware wallets. I'll link to it in the description. Um, this is what you would want to do. So you would want to start it in bootloader mode. Uh, now for the Model 1 to start, uh, to connect it in bootloader mode, you want to press both buttons, plug it in, and it will be in bootloader mode. For the Model T, it's a little quirkier, so I'll show you this on camera. Uh, when you plug it in, you want to move your finger on the screen and that will tell it to start in bootloader mode uh, and you want to connect it to the host. And now if you take this command here and you run it, uh, it will ask you on screen, do you want to wipe device? Yes. Now only do this when you're sure that there are no, uh, there's no Bitcoin on it or any other crypto uh, because it is essentially wiping the device. So both the data and its firmware. Uh, so yeah, I hope this was insightful. This is how I set things up. I usually do this uh, using command line on Tails. This is a super secure and private way of setting up Trezor devices. Uh, in next episode, we are going to set up an Electrum wallet on Tails uh, using a hardware wallet, probably multi-sig. So stay tuned. I will see you shortly. Bye.